Hey and welcome to this video. This is a really, really important video for your physics GCSE. We're going to be looking at the formula sheet, the equations on the formula sheet and the units that you need um, to go with those equations. Now this is an important video because while they give you the formula sheet in the exam, you don't have to learn that bit, you do have to learn the units and if you don't learn the units the formula sheet will become virtually unusable for you. So I have marked a, a lot of physics exam questions in uh, my time and I've come up with the set of rules that I always get my students to follow because if you follow these rules um, you will do really well in the exam. So get your magic physics pen and uh, my students will understand this. They all are issued with a felt tip pen in their favourite colour which they have to turn up to every single physics lesson with. It is magic. Um, you just circle all the numbers you can see in the question. Sometimes they're going to put a lot of words into these physics questions. You don't necessarily need all of the words. What you need is the numbers. So every time you see a number in the question, just put a big circle around it. And then look at the units associated with this number. Are they mass? Is the number related to mass? Is it related to distance? Is it speed? And then you can work your... Um, Find, get your formula sheets and work out, find an equation that's all these different bits in. I am going to show you examples of this in um, a couple of videos time. And then write down the formula. Now generally this is going to be your first mark. Uh, write down the numbers under the formula in the right place. So just writing down the numbers in the equation, do the maths and then add on the unit. So as you can see from this, you actually only get one mark down here for doing the maths. Um, if you forget your calculator in the exam, and please don't forget your calculator, um, you can still get three, two, three of the marks for writing down something, even if you um, don't get the right answer. And if you do forget your calculator in the exam, you can still get a mark for the unit down here. Just write down any number and add the unit on the end. Now, maths questions can be anything from two marks up to five marks, but generally, these are what the marks are going to be for. So your first mark is going to be for working out what formula to use. Your second mark is for plugging in the numbers. Your third mark is for doing the maths. And your fourth mark is for working out the correct units. Now, it has been pointed out to me... Um, when I've been giving my students exam questions, that a virtual identical question can be anything from two marks to five marks. Um, foundation paper, P1, you're likely to get four or five marks for a maths question. Higher paper, P3, it's likely to be two marks. I can determine absolutely no pattern in how the examiners um, decide how many marks to award for a question. But if you follow this formula, um, these set of rules, hopefully you should be able to get every single mark available to you. So these, um, <coughs> these are just the equations that are available on um, your formula sheet. This is an example of what you'll get given. What you get, won't get given are the um, units, and you have to learn all of the units, otherwise you won't be able to use the formula sheet. So I am going to write on the units for you in green. What I'd like you to do is hopefully you have a formula sheet in front of you. If you don't, I've put a link for you in the description where you can download a formula sheet. Um, get your formula sheet, get a pen and then start annotating it with the units that I'm about to write on for you. So this is the equation for working out specific heat capacity. Um, energy transfer, that is going to be in joules. Mass is in kilograms and this is temperature change here and that's in degrees and the units for specific heat capacity are joules per kilogram degrees okay this is a nice easy one here it does appear on the formula sheet but you don't have to learn any equate um, units for it Again, this one on your formula sheet, but you don't have to learn any units for this one either. So this one is relating to energy, power and time. The units for energy are joules, the units for power are watts, and the units for time are seconds. So this is speed, frequency and wavelength. Speed is measured in metres per second. Wavelength is measured 
in meters and frequency is measured in hertz. I'd just like to draw your attention to my use of capital and lowercase letters. This is important when you're writing down units. So force is measured in newtons, mass is measured in kilograms and acceleration is meters per second squared. Now I just want to point out to you this little line here, that means per. You could also write it as a negative number. So here we have a rather complicated looking equation. So acceleration here is measured in metres per second squared. The initial velocity is measured in metres per second. Final velocity is in metres per second and time is in seconds. Right, I'm going to pause that there, come back to it later, because I'm sure you can hear the baby over the baby monitor and he's just woken up. So this is for weight and mass. Our weight is in newtons. Um, remember that force is also in newtons, so your weight is actually the force that you're exerting upon the earth. Your mass is in kilograms, and the gravitational field strength is in newtons per kilogram. Now, sometimes they'll give you the number for this, and sometimes they won't give you the number for this. So on Earth, the gravitational field strength is 10 Newton kilograms. As a point of interest, on the Moon, gravity is a lot weaker, and it is 1.6 Newton kilograms. So here we have the um, equation for the extension of elastic objects. We have our force, which is going to be in newtons. We have our spring constant, which is in newton meters, and our extension is in meters. Um, you might also see this in the exam, or know this as Hooke's law. This is the equation for work done. Work done is in joules. Force is in newtons and distance is in metres. Hopefully some of these should be starting to come familiar for you now. So force is always in newtons, distance always in metres. So here we're looking at the chain in gravitational potential energy. Energy, so our unit is joules. The mass up here, our unit for mass is kilograms. The change, uh, the gravitational field strength, hopefully you remember that from the last slide, is Newton kilograms and the change in height is meters. Another type of energy here, this time kinetic, so our energy is in joules. This here is just a number, so that's just half, we don't need units for that. Mass is in kilograms and your speed, your velocity, is in meters per second. Remember, velocity is just speed with a direction. So here we have momentum, and momentum is in kilograms, meters per second. Mass is in kilograms, and velocity is in meters per second. So now moving on to a set of equations all to do with electricity. We have our current, which is in amps, our charge, which is in columns, and our time in seconds. Here, the potential difference is in volts. This is the work done, and that is in joules, and our charge is in columns. Here again, our potential difference is in volts. Our charge, amps, uh, sorry, our current is in amps, and the resistance is in ohms. Now I've added this one in here, it's not on the formula sheet, but it's always good to know that when you're working out the cost of electricity, it's the power times the time times the cost per, per kilowatt hour. So our power here is in watts, our energy is in joules, and our time is in seconds. So here our power is in watts. Our current in amps and our potential difference is in volts. 
for this equation, the energy transferred is in joules, the potential difference is in volts, and the charge is in columns. Okay, moving on to the P3 um, formula sheet now. So we have distance in metres, speed in metres per second, and time in seconds. Okay, we don't need any units for refractive index, but um, the units for angles, incidence, or degrees, and so for the angle of refraction. No units needed for magnification either, because it's just a ratio. You just need to measure the image height and divide it by the object height. So here we have lens power, not electrical power, lens power. And this is measured in diopters. And focal length, which is in metres. This is one just for the P3 higher paper. So refractive index, again, doesn't need a unit. One is just a number, and the critical angle is measured in degrees. So here time is measured in seconds, and frequency is measured in hertz. So moments are measured in newton meters, force is in newtons, and distance in meters. Pressure is measured in pascals, force is measured in newtons, and area is measured in metres squared. So the only ones that have units on here are the potential difference, and potential difference is in volts. Number of turns is just a number of turns, so we don't need the units for these ones. And the last one that you'll need for AQA, we have um, potential difference in volts and current in amps.